Well, you've experienced this. You saw, as I said, you were a part of the cancel culture before there was a cancel culture, but you didn't back down. You stood firm. Uh, what can people learn about how to confront this cancel culture? Well, I, I think we really were a model for believers. Unfortunately, I see so many people not follow that example and, and cave and apologize for truth. And, and you just, it's not the way, what, what they're gonna do is they're gonna say what they're gonna say about you. They're gonna write what they write about you. Uh, I was just reading today, even after all these, this, that was you know seven years ago. And still, you know, dads are racist, dads are homophobe, dads are this. And so once they've labeled you, they're gonna label you. The thing is, if you just don't stop and you continue to speak truth into the culture, then they can't stop you. I mean, there's no stop you. But if you start apologizing and backing up, then people don't believe that you're a person of conviction. So I think what people have to do is when it comes to truth, and I love uh, your previous guest, I mean, the congressman, because that's what we need more of. People willing to not only take a stand, speak truth, and do it on the floor of Congress, but at the same time, not apologize for it. So this, this is a right thing, and I'm not going to back off of that. So I think that's the biggest mistake people make, because then it looks like you have no conviction to your beliefs and to your character. And, and what I have found, Al, in, in the time that we've been experiencing this over the last decade and a half, is that those that back up, apologize for something they shouldn't apologize for, it, it shows that weakness and vulnerability and only in it only causes the the left to dig in more and come after them even more. They become relentless. Exactly. You know, and from our own home state, Tony, I mean, this this last year, last summer, this thing with Drew Brees, you know, it just broke my heart because what he said was so good. I mean, he honored his grandfathers. He talked about their patriotism, their serving. And then these people came after him. And at first he stood and then he winds up apologizing for something he should have never done. And look, they've never stopped. I mean, that's that's what they do. That's the way the left does it. Certainly the anti-religious, uh, that's going to be their playbook. But look, truth is still truth. And, and the word of God was still spoken on the floor of Congress. And I love that. In the debate that was going on there is exactly what it is. I have to say that I agree with Representative Nadler for the maybe the first time ever that for the most part, especially Democrats in Congress, they have no concern with the will of God. What he said there has been proven to be a true statement. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He did speak truth in that moment. Uh, and sure. I think it was revealing. And I think we're seeing this increasingly, this hostility toward religion. And I think the conflict is coming between this radical agenda of the sexual confusion, redefinition, this gender ideology, this new gender ideology where you can define your own gender. And because the scripture is so clear on these issues, we saw it first with marriage because the Bible speaks to marriage both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It clearly speaks to gender. Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 19. And, and so the only way for them to successfully take their agenda all across America throughout public policy at every level, they have to remove scripture. Because as long as people stand on it and believe it, it is a barrier to what they want to accomplish. You're exactly right, Tony. And doesn't it go back to the original satanic lie in the garden back in Genesis 3? I mean, you will be like God. I mean, what people now is like, no, it's not the, that some creator or some chance or whatever determined who I am. No, I want to be able to control that myself. And so I think it speaks to that base instinct of wanting to totally be your own God. And, and you nailed it in the monologue. I mean, this this whole leftism thing that's going on now is a religion. And I mean, th they have a way of worshiping that and we are in the way. We are the last thing to try to wipe out so that that religion can go forward. And look, it's, what's so bad about it is it's so destructive. I mean, look what it does to its own movement and how it destroys itself. So th this will collapse. I, I think that's why the people of God have to just be consistent. I mean, we are in the days of Babylon in the sense of we, we got to have Daniels, we got to have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that are willing to go into the fire and come out because I trust me, God's going to be with you in that process. Absolutely. Uh, we just have to, uh, to trust him. I, I want to ask you a, a couple of more questions and then I'm going to ask you to pray uh, for believers because as we have members of Congress and we want them to stand and we, we're encouraged by that, but each of us are placed in an area of influence and we need to each stand firm regardless of 
where we are, what, regardless of our vocation, uh, regardless of our location, we need to speak truth uh, in love, but we've got to be bold, uncompromising in, in speaking the truth to a culture that clearly, clearly is confused. You, what do you see today, you know, I put, I'm going to ask you to put your pastor hat on for just a moment and speak to, a mo to, to this for a moment about, uh, about pastors, what pastors need to be doing in this hour. Well, I think more than ever, you know, I, I was really convicted. I, I preached a sermon recently, uh, talk, and it was before the election, and just talking about the importance uh, of us being involved in the process, but really showing the power of God in that process. It's just like what you said, that our prayers go to strength and voting and being a part of that. And I think I think pastors have been, have been silenced, uh, certainly over my lifetime because of a lot of fear, uh, fear tactics about, you know, taking away your tax exempt status, blah, blah, blah. And I, I think it's allowed the evil one to really just basically take the culture all around us while we're in our buildings speaking just to our people and not speaking true to that. So I think people have to be bold and pastors have to be bold in the pulpit. You know, I think about, you know, going back to when this country was founded, the rallying points were in those pulpits. I mean, that, they were rallying people to the idea that we can become our own nation. And I think we have to rally people to say, we don't want our nation taken away and all the things that we love and the values that we have. So don't be fearful. I, I mean, I said to my congregation, I repented. I said, when I was a younger man, I was bullied into silence by not speaking truth into culture and into the politics of our country from this pulpit. But I was like, no more. I mean, one of the things that happened in my maturation, of course, that also helps Tony that they're not paying me now, I'm volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, I said, you know, I should have been more vocal when I was younger, but I, I listened to the voices that said, you can't do that. You can't talk, you, you just talk about Bible stuff here. You don't talk about what's going on in culture. And now that's all together because I'm the same kind of whether I'm on the podcast or I'm in the pulpit and I'm challenging people. You can't vote for these people that are, that are doing the work of the evil one. You cannot do that. Uh, I agree 100%. There is no segment segmentation with God. It all is under his authority. You know, we, we've talked many times and we kind of walked with you through that period of time where the, the left came after you with duck dynasty. But I, I want to ask you this one question because I think this, this will be instructive to those who are out there that may be, you know, they're not a, they don't have a, a television show, they're not in public office, but they're in a workplace where this, this agenda is being pushed. They may be a teacher, they may be uh, any number of things, maybe a police officer, maybe a fireman, maybe a member of the military, uh, may just be a mom and a dad that are trying to raise their kids to follow God and honor Him in an increasingly godless culture. And they're a risk, you know, when you stand up and you speak truth, and sometimes they come, it comes out of nowhere. But what did you learn? What was the thing, if you could point to one thing that you learned through your experience when they came after Duck Dynasty and your dad that you could share with them that might help them in their boldness and in their courage? Well, a couple of things. You know, we, we had this national television show. Obviously, it was hugely popular. Many people watched it. Then, of course, the attack came, and, of course, that fractured the audience, and so a lot of people left. But a lot of people stayed and were convicted because we stood on conviction. What's interesting is now we're four years past the show, uh, the podcast you talked about, Unashamed. I mean, this thing is reaching literally millions of people. And a lot of those are, are young boys, mostly, and young men uh, that watched our show. But now they're becoming aware culturally and spiritually. And now they're listening to us teach the Bible. And so that was, that was the platform that God built for us because we didn't we didn't back away and we stood firm for him. And now we're impacting all these people in our culture. And so I, you, you said it right. That happens no matter where you are. You don't have to have a national television show to do that. People from our podcast always ask me all the time, how do I be bold in my faith? And I said, by talking about it, by talking about what God did in you. I just spoke to some police officers recently. I told them my story. I was in New Orleans. I was lost. I was a prodigal son. And a police officer sat down with me on a curb and shared with me about Jesus because he saw an opportunity for an 18-year-old young man to get on the right path. And that turned me around. So any police officer, any jailer, any teacher, you're going to have those moments where you can speak truth into that moment. That is your platform. That's what God's built for you. So don't back away. The Bible says take advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel and to defend the hope that you have. 
And, and by doing that, you're going to open the door of eternity uh, yes. to, and the abundant life to those that will come to know the truth and be set free as a result. Uh, Al, I want to ask you to, uh, to pray for us as we close out our time together, praying for just what you just talked about, for that boldness and that courage to wherever, we, wherever someone is, no matter where God has placed them, to be bold in their faith and share it and live it so that others might come to know it. So I'd, I'd love to. Father, I just want to come to you. And uh, first of all, I just thank you for my brother. Um, what, what, a, what a bold warrior for you. He's one of my heroes in the faith. And I pray you continue to bless Tony and his family, his ministry uh, for FRC, for everything that's happening uh, to, to be Daniel uh, in the lion's den. And so I pray for this brother. Uh, Father, I pray for every believer. I pray for every person that's facing uh, cancellation uh, because of who they are and what they believe. I pray, Father, you give them strength and boldness. Father, I pray in this moment, in 2021, that we can be just like the first century church in Acts chapter 8 that was under great persecution. And yet because of that, the fan, the flame was fanned to be able to get the gospel out in an even bigger way. And so I know people are hurting. I know people are wondering. This last year has brought so many people into question and doubt. So I pray, Father, that all of us who know the, the freedom message of the gospel, that we can be bold and we can share and we can make changes that will change us forever. Father, we know that this, this other ideology is from the evil one. We know where it comes from. And Father, we pray that you help us to be able to rise up to be men and women of yours who don't miss an opportunity to help other people and they continue to be strong no matter what criticism comes our way. We love you, Father. We thank you for Jesus so much. I pray for our government. I pray for all of our leaders. I pray, Father, that more men like the congressman will speak the word of truth in places of power. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Phil Robertson, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And uh, please tell your dad I said hello. Al, I'm would. sorry, Al. That's all right. I'm looking think... more like all the time. Well, you got to work on that beard a little bit. <laughs> I just shaved it. That's right. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it.